turned the lights on, Brother Walker stood at that back door with tears streaming down my face saying, Lord, you sent me here, now you send the people. And one by one, they began to walk through that door. God began to do a great work in this house. I'd gone to the office. There was an inventory sheet on the desk of everything that belonged to the church. The overseer said, if you can do nothing, we're going to sell the property. There was nothing I could do. But God moved. And I can tell you, Henniger Church of God, God's hand is on this place. God's hand has been on this place since day one. God still has a work to be done right here on this mountain. And I can feel that in this place tonight. Thank you, Pastor, for allowing me to come tonight. Your precious wife. Appreciate the opportunity. Brother Rodney, some of those that I pastored are here. Thank you, Goose Pond, for coming tonight. Pray for them. They're going to listen to me tonight, tomorrow morning, and tomorrow night. It means a lot to me to have my church come. Amen. It was an honor to meet Pastor King last night. Section Church of God heard nothing but good about him and what the Lord is doing there. Appreciate him being here tonight. Just give me a few moments to visit. I got to get this out of my system. Amen. Sister Lanitas, good to see you. You're one of the very first that was here that morning, sat there on that second pew. And then, after a few weeks, don't know exactly how much time passed. We were up in the choir and we were singing. Those of us that were here, we didn't have a piano player. Our youth pastor's wife knew how to chord a few things, but she couldn't play the song that was chosen that morning. All of a sudden, this lady that I don't know anything about said, give me that book, I'll play it. Sister Howell jumped on that piano and she began to play, and I thought, thank you, Jesus. Then one night she was playing for the offering, and I said, sing that song. She was sitting over here. I said, sing that song. She went, you sing it. I said, no, you sing it. She said, you sing it. And I sang. And that was the first time in my ministry I'd ever sang in church. And I've been singing ever since. Maybe she shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should shut up. But can I be at home just for a few moments tonight? I guess one of the songs that I'll always be known for. The kids always want me to sing it. The kids that were here at Henniger, the kids at Goose Pond, knows Brother Jerry sings this song, and everybody knows it. Everybody will be happy over there. Will you help me sing that tonight? Will you stand as a choir and help me sing this tonight? Be glad. There's a happy land of promise for in the great beyond Where the saved of earth shall soon the glory share Where the souls of men shall enter and live on forevermore Everybody will be happy, sing it now Everybody. 
standing tonight I told the pastor I needed volume so don't blame him, blame me Amen, hallelujah I have folks that bring their earplugs and their cotton balls Amen Hallelujah That's alright Praise God Amen Praise the Lord it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Go with me to the book of Habakkuk tonight. The Old Testament book of Habakkuk chapter 3. Habakkuk chapter 3. Beginning at verse 1 and reading through verse number 6. Habakkuk chapter 3. Verses 1 through verse number 6. Hallelujah. Kim and Brian standing here on the front pew, second pew. I met them here at Henniger. As a matter of fact, it was Kim and her mother that was hired by a family member of theirs to take care of the church lawn. I had no idea who was taking care of the church lawn. Someone said, I'll take care of it. Don't worry about it. Never met them. When we began, never received any money. She wouldn't take it. So we began to pray. The church began to pray, and we would stretch our hand toward the grass area, and we would pray, Lord, whoever it is is cutting our church grass, save them. Bring them into the house of God. God did that. Hallelujah. Her mother came knocking at the door one morning. She said, I've got something that belongs to God. I'm not a church-going woman, but I've got something that belongs to God. She handed me an envelope. It was her tithe for a year. She came to the house of God. God touched her right before he called her home. I'm so thankful for the work of God. That he's done in this house. Amen. I'm going to talk about a little more of that tonight because I want this church to hold on. I want this church in Henniger to hold on because we're nearing the coming of the Lord and the best is yet to come. Hallelujah. I feel that tonight. The best is yet to come. Hallelujah. Brother John, I appreciate him, a minister in our church, a great friend, backs me up. Sometimes wants to beat me up. Hallelujah. Good friend. But he may be bigger, but I'm stronger. I'm 
Habakkuk chapter 3. A prayer of Habakkuk the prophet upon Shiganoth. O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known in wrath, remember mercy. God came from Teman and the Holy One from Mount Paran, Selah. His glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of His praise. His brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of His hand. There was the hiding of His power. Before Him went the pestilence and burning coals went forth at His feet. He stood and measured the earth. He beheld and drove asunder the nations, and the everlasting mountains were scattered. The perpetual hills did bow. His ways are everlasting. There's two words in verse 3 I want to preach from tonight, and it's simply this. God came. God came. How many of you want God to come in this place tonight? He's already here. In the midst of a nation that needs God. In the midst of a church world that needs God. We need God to come like never before. Would you pray for me and ask God to anoint me that I can share this word that he has directed me to preach tonight. Father, I love you tonight. I honor you. I am nothing. You are the potter. I am the clay. Take a hot coal off the altars of God laid upon these lips. More than anything, we desire your presence. Won't you come in your power? Won't you come in your strength? Revive us in this house tonight. When we leave this house, may we know that we've been in the presence of the King. Back up your word with signs, follow into a mighty work in this altar. We'll give you praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen, amen. You may be seated. I told my church if they hear something tonight they've heard before to shout like they've never heard it before and go, wow, that was good preaching. Man, a prayer of the prophet Habakkuk. Habakkuk, whose name means one who clings. Who was it that Habakkuk clung to? He clung to the Lord. This text that I read to you tonight is a, a prayer song. It was a song of prayer that was born out of fear. It was a burden that the prophet felt. It was concern because the prophet had heard from the Lord concerning his nation and his people. And it caused him to tremble. And it caused him to be afraid. Can I tell you tonight that we need to hear what the Lord is saying in this last hour. We need to hear what he's saying about our nation. We need to hear what he's saying about the church world that we are living in. And I believe if we could hear what the Spirit and the Holy Ghost is saying, I believe in 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1, this is what he is saying. The Spirit speaketh expressly that in the last time some shall depart from the faith. Not all but some given heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. I believe the Holy Ghost would let us know that we are living in the last days when men are lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. I believe it would tell us that we have a form of godliness, but we are denied the power thereof. We are living in perilous times. Perilous times is not going to come, but perilous times are here right now. And it should cause us 
to be burdened. It should cause us to be concerned. It should drive us to an altar of prayer. It should shake us out of our complacency and out of our indifference because that is where we are living in this last hour. Can somebody just lift your hands right now and honor the Lord? I feel him in this house right now. Hallelujah. When he heard the judgment that was coming, and can I tell you, that judgment is coming up on a nation that has turned themselves away from God, a nation that at one time feared the Lord. Oh, can I preach tonight like I normally preach? You know how I preach. I, I might as well just preach the truth tonight. We're more concerned about culture. We're more concerned about what's politically correct. We're living in an hour that the school is teaching things. Come on, we've got young people that are identifying themselves as dogs and cats and, and people can't decide whether they're a woman or whether they are a man. We need a revival in this last hour. Oh, yes, as for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. As for me and my church, we are going to serve the Lord and we need a revival. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house tonight. Can I tell you, Henniger Church of God, don't go by what's popular. Keep the lights on in the sanctuary. We don't need a movie theater. Come on. We don't need a nightclub. We need the word of God preached under the unction of the Holy Ghost. Can I preach? Hallelujah. Revive thy work, he prayed. He sang this as a prayer song. Revive thy work in the midst of the years. In wrath, remember mercy. He was calling for a reviving of the work of God. Revive thy work. Preserve thy work. Keep alive thy work. Recover thy work. Repair thy work. Restore thy work. Save thy work. Leave us a remnant. Can I tell you that God has always had a people and God always will have a people. There's a remnant that's still wants a move of God. There's a remnant that still wants revival. There's a remnant that still wants the glory of the Lord. Will you be a part of that remnant tonight? Revive us, God. Preserve us, God. Recover us, Lord. I'm sure that Pastor Walker Pastor King and other ministers in this church can tell you the past few years have been very challenging for the church. You know that. COVID just about destroyed many churches. I might as well, I'm not popular, so I might as well not be popular tonight. Come on. And about destroyed churches in this area. Come on, parking lots before COVID that at one time was full. They're not full anymore because people are afraid to come back to the house of God. I want to tell you something. Thank God for Facebook. But long before Facebook, we met together in the house of God. We did not forsake the assembling together of ourselves. And as for me, I want to come to the house of God because the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Come on, wave your hands before the Lord. Help me tonight, Holy Ghost. My Lord, I feel him in this house. I hope I can preach it like I feel it on my soul. But do you know that it's in times of trouble? It's in times of trial. That's when God sends revival. Revival doesn't come when the birds are singing. Revival doesn't come when the sun is shining. Revival doesn't come 
when the church is full and everybody's coming. Revival doesn't come. I'm about to lose my dignity here tonight. Come on. Revival doesn't come when there's money in the church account. But revival comes when there's trouble on every hand. Revival comes when we don't know how we're going to make it from week to week. You want to know why? Because that's when we depend on the Lord. If the church can get back to a dependency upon the Lord, we would see a mighty outpouring of the Holy Ghost in this last hour. Woo! Hallelujah! Though I walk in the midst of trouble, Thou wilt revive me. Ezra 9 and 9 says, For we were bonded, but yet God hath not forsaken us in our bondage. I'm glad that God didn't forsake us during COVID. Somebody say praise God. But hath extended mercy to us to give us a reviving, to set up our house of God, to repair the desolations thereof. Thank God he kept us. Thank God his hand is still upon us. And we can still build the house of God and have a move of God in this last hour. Hallelujah, pour it on us, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, come on, honor him in this house. Hallelujah. We were having church outside. Folks weren't able to come into the house of God. I remember on Sunday mornings, I'd walk the floors of the sanctuary. I would turn on choir singing music. Tears would stream down my face. Will we ever get to come back to church? Come on. Where you at, God? But I can tell you like Habakkuk said. After he prayed, God, revive your work. Keep alive your work. My Lord, I feel him right now. He said these two words, Pastor King. God came. (laughs) Woo! Can anybody testify tonight that God came when your back was against the wall and you didn't think you were going to make it? God came when you thought the church wasn't going to survive. God came and manifested his glory. I'm telling you, if we will pray and seek the face of God, he will come in all of his power and all of his glory. Woo, hallelujah. Pastor Walker, I can tell you I feel the same anointing behind this pulpit I felt when I pastored here. The anointing's not gone anywhere. The will of God has not gone anywhere. God is getting ready to come again. Woo, hallelujah. God came from Teman and the Holy One from Mount Paran. Then he said, Selah, take a pause and think about that for a moment. God came. And what was he basing this on? What he prayed. If God came down on Mount Sinai, which Mount Paran is type of if God did it before he will do it again if God came before he will come again if God sent revival yesteryear he will send revival again if he saved before he'll 
save again. If he delivered before, he'll deliver again. If he sanctified before, he'll sanctify again. If he filled with the Holy Ghost before, he will fill with the Holy Ghost again. We need God to come. Somebody needs a healing, Lord. Come by here. Somebody needs a healing, Lord. Come by here. Somebody needs a healing, Lord. Come by here. Lord, Lord, won't you come by here? Somebody needs the Holy Ghost, Lord. Come by here. Somebody needs deliverance, Lord. Come by here. Somebody needs the victory, Lord. Come by here. Lord, Lord. Won't you come by here? He's here right now. I feel him. And what were the characteristics of God coming? You'll find that the prophet said after God came that his glory covered the heavens. What is the glory of God? It's the beauty of God. It's the excellency of God. It is the majesty of God. Exodus 33, Moses said, I beseech you, Lord, show me thy glory. And God said, I will make my goodness pass before thee. I will put thee in the cleft of the rock while my glory passes by, and I will cover thee with my hand. Oh, yes, the goodness of God is the glory of God. Hang in here with me just a few moments. Second Chronicles 7, 1 through 2, when Solomon made an end of praying, the fire, like the preacher preached last night, came down from heaven, and the glory of the Lord, the weight of the Lord, the splendor of the Lord filled the house, and the priests could not even enter in to the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. Oh, how I long for God to come and his glory to fill our sanctuary. We can't sing our same three songs. We can't go through our routine. I might as well, if I don't get to sing my song, I'm not coming back. Leave. I said, there's the door. I tell my church that make room for the glory of God. If you don't recognize me, I'm not coming back. You're here for the wrong purpose. No flesh is going to glory in the presence of God. We need the glory of the Lord. Woo! I feel him. We need a shaking in the glory of God. What we'll cause a shaking? I remember, and I'm going to share this to encourage this church. Two things come to my mind. I was preaching on a Sunday morning. And I was preaching about God sending a shaking. That Sunday morning, this place was full. I said, God is getting ready to shake the very ground that you're walking on. And about that time, that door swung open. Some of you that were here may remember it. And there was a man that came running into this sanctuary. And he said, God is shaking the ground I'm walking on. He said, I was coming up the road, and the Lord said, turn right, go down that road, and see that church on the left. Turn into that parking lot. He turned into that parking lot, got out of his car, and he said, as soon as he got out of the car, he said, the ground began to shake, and he hit this altar, and God touched him. That's the glory that we need again at Henniger, at Section, at Goose Pond, wherever you're from we need the glory of the Lord that's the only thing that's going to win the lost is God's glory Woo! 
My Lord, that's the real power of God right there. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 97 years old and feeling the power of God. On a Wednesday night, I never checked the mail on Wednesday night. I don't know where the mailbox still is, but it used to be across the street. And I came in, turned on the lights, and I felt impressed of the Lord to go check the mail. So I did. Don't even remember if anything was in the box or not. But I went, went across the road, and I kept the door open because it was dark like it is now. So the light from the center was shining on the parking lot. Come on. Thank the Lord. <laughs> this Yankee is afraid of the dark. Especially Alabama dark. It's a different darkness, let me tell you. But as I was... Coming back across the parking lot, there was a car that peeled in here. You could hear the, the, the rocks on the parking lot as he squealed into this parking lot. And he jumped out of the car and he said, Preacher, does the Lord still love me? I looked at him and I said, Yes, he most certainly does. He said, the Lord told me to turn down that road. And I would see a man walking across the parking lot. There would be a light that would be shining on the parking lot. You ask him if I still love you. I didn't know that. And I asked that man, I said, sir, what is your name? He said, I can't tell you my name. If I told you my name, you would know who I am. All I need to know is does God still love me? I want a Henniger to know. I want this community to know that God God still loves you regardless of, of where you've been and what you've done. What do you say? That's not about us. It's about the glory of God. Come on. Glory. I'm talking about things that's happened here. Hallelujah. Choir was singing one morning. I don't know why I'm saying all this. There's a man that came and sat back toward the back there. Choir was singing and I saw him. Tears were streaming down his face. So I took off the platform and I went to him and I shook his hand. And I said, brother, it's good to have you. Can I pray with you? He said, I just came to hear the beautiful singing. The man was eaten up with cancer. Walked him to the front of this building. Hallelujah. We began to pray for him and God touched him. Did he become a member here? No. Did he become an attender here? No. But several months down the road in Family Dollar one Sunday morning, I saw him and he said, Preacher, I want you to know that after I left church, I went home and I told my family what the Lord did for me. And the Lord saved my wife and saved my children and we're in the house of God. He may be in heaven right now, but I'm telling you, if God came, come on, 8 and 12 years ago, God wants to come again. God is not done. He wants to manifest his glory among his people. Come on. He praise him. Somebody glorify him. I've got to hurry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the glory comes, there's going to be the praise of God that's going to resound. It's not a praise team. It's not a cheerleader. It's not singing the most newest song. And I'm not against songs that glorify the Lord. Don't get me wrong. But church has become entertainment. 
sing me something to make me feel good. And we depend on what goes on up here. And there's not much going on out there. Am I telling it right? Come on. Move me if you can. Well, if the glory of the Lord comes in the house of God, I said if the glory of the Lord comes in the house of God, what's going to happen? Nobody will have to tell you lift up your hands. Nobody will have to tell you to stand to your feet. Nobody will have to tell you to come to the altar. All of a sudden, your hands will go up. You'll cry, holy, holy is the Lord. You'll bow that bended knee. You'll worship God. You'll glorify him when the glory of the Lord fills the house of God. His glory. Then we see his hand. His hand represents his power. He had horns coming out of his hand. Daniel said none. And Daniel 4.35 can stay his hand. Isaiah 49 and 2, in the shadow of his hand, he hath hid me. Jeremiah 1 and 9, the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. Ezekiel 3, 14, the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. Acts 11, 21, the hand of the Lord was with them and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. When God comes, not only are we going to experience his glory, we're going to see his mighty hand at work in the lives of people and we will know it's nothing more than in the hand of the Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me. It must have been the hand of the Lord. He touched me and I turned around. Somebody touch me. He touched me. I feel the touch of God. I feel his hand on my life when God comes. Then when he comes, his feet are going to be present. The prophet said there was burning coals that went forth at his feet. His feet burned with fire. You want to know why? Because he's been in the fire. Can I tell somebody tonight, he's been in the furnace with you. He's the fourth man that's walking around in the fiery furnace. I want to tell you right now, I'm not preaching up here because everything's right in my life right now. If you only knew my life, my personal life, and things happening right now, it's turned completely upside down. Down. I've never fought the devil like I'm fighting the devil right now. The past few months have been absolutely unprecedented. But I can tell you there's a fourth man that's walking around. Woo! I said there's a fourth man that's walking around in the fiery furnace. And the fire may be burning, but it's not going to burn you up. Just as sure whoa, as you came in to the fire, you're coming out of that fire you're going to be loosed your bondage is going to fall and you're going to have liberty like you've never had before hand of God's on your life young man He's walking around in the furnace with you hallelujah I said he's walking around in the furnace with you glory I'm hurrying My Lord, his feet, I remember years ago, the Goose Pond Church of God, I was just a young teen, the Son of God got up, she had a walker and she stood up and she said, children of God, how the old timers used to talk, children of God, holiness, come on. Children of God. She said, the Lord is in this house. She said, I just saw the skirts of his robe walk past my pew. <laughs> and he's in this place. When she said that, the glory of God hit that sanctuary and people shouted all over that place. I wonder... 
If the Lord would open up somebody's eyes here tonight and they could literally see that the Lord is walking up and down. I'm telling you, I'm tired of our tradition. I'm tired of the way we do things over and over again. I'm tired of the same old, same old. I'm tired of being church of God and Pentecostal and there's no fire and there's no glory and there's no move of God. If we're going to be church of God, if we're going to be Pentecostal, we need a move of the Holy Ghost, bring our singing back, bring our shouting back, bring the fire back, bring the glory back. I still believe it like I was raised to believe it. There's one thing that I know is true that is the power of God. I said the hour shall come, but the hour is here, saith the Lord. When you shall worship me in spirit and in truth, for I'm seeking such that will worship me. As you worship me and you magnify me, I will fill this house with my glory and my presence and you will see my mighty hand at work in your life and I say unto you what you have prayed for in the secret place I have heard praise me now and ye shall see a performance of what you have asked saith the Lord lift your hands and honor the Holy Ghost in this house Woo! Hallelujah! Come on, church, praise Him! Oh, Lord, that that would rend the heavens. You would come down, that the mountains might flow down at Thy presence. Stand with me, please. Hallelujah! I need some music wherever it's going to come from tonight. God bless you all. Hallelujah. As I was praying. I slipped out to the church. Set my office. I was seeking God's direction for tonight. When the Lord brought this scripture to my mind. And those two words. God came, I felt in my spirit there were going to be people here that needs God to come for you. You need a move of God in your life. You need a manifestation of God in your life tonight. You've gone as far as you can go. God wants to touch you tonight if you'll let him. Glory to God. I can preach. I can preach for another hour. Any one of these ministers and pastors could preach. We can preach our heart out. But it'll do you no good if you don't respond. If you're here tonight, you say, Brother Jerry, I need God to come for me. I need God to come for me. I need help. And you believe God's going to come tonight. I want you to step out of your seat. I want you to come and stand across the front of this building. Come on, you need God to come? Come on right now. Come on. Glory to God. Stand side by side. I could come and I could lay my hand on about six more people. You need to come on right now. Come on. Hallelujah. 
Oh, yes. Stand all the way across. Come on. Just move up. Glory to God. Glory to God. Anybody else? There's some more need to move. Some others that need to move. Come on. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. The Lord's waiting. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. He's coming. The whole time I preached, the Lord had me focus on you. God's going to touch you in this house tonight. He's going to come. He's going to come. Come on. Will you come? Will you come? I don't drag things out. You that know me know that I don't. But I'm waiting. The Lord wants to move. Glory to God. Glory to God. God's moving. Pastor King, make your way up here to help us tonight. Brother John, Pastor, glory to God. Any other ministers? Amen, Brother Heard. Hallelujah. We're going to believe God to touch you tonight. If you believe God's able to touch these in this house, I want you to step out of your seat and come and just begin to pray for them. Will you come? Come on, help us pray. Glory to God. Brother John, Pastor King, just begin to obey the Lord. Brother Walker, we're going to pray and believe God. Just begin to minister as the Lord would have you to minister tonight.
Jesus.
really song. I made a promise that I was going to serve him till the day I die. How many here is going to serve the Lord till the day you die? I want to tell you what a glorious thing it is to serve God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Get right, church. Get right, church. I praise you, Lord. He touched my body tonight. I've been battling. He touched my body. He's been healing me a little at a time. As I walk in obedience, he's been bringing healing to me, brother. But I want to tell you something tonight. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ. Yes, 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 yes. As I was sitting over there listening to you preach, The Holy Spirit was telling me. He was reminding me of the prayer of Jesus in John 17. When he said, Father, I would that they would be one together as you and I are one. And that's the battle that the enemy wants to stop. He, He wants to prevent us from being brothers and sisters in Christ. Jesus asked us to love one another. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He said if we love one another, then that's evidence that we are his disciples, brother. There's no difference from any of us. I don't care if they go to your church. I don't care if they're down the road at the Baptist church or over in, in Fort Payne at the Methodist church. There's Jesus and him crucified. Hallelujah. Jesus and him crucified. (laughs) Glory to God. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. And I hope, I hope and pray that if I see you in Walmart or down at the grocery store or pumping gas, that you go, hey, sis. And I hope that I look at you and I go, hey, brother. And I hope and pray 
that the love and the unity that the Spirit of God has brought in this house tonight doesn't leave us when we walk out the door. We got to have each other, y'all. I can't do it without you, brother. We need each other. And we say yes to walking in the unity. Do you say yes? Do you yes. say yes to yes. the prayer of Jesus that we yes. walk in unity? Glory to God. There's no reason to bicker over little things. It's Jesus and him crucified. Hallelujah. I thank y'all so much. Thank y'all for being here. Thank you so much. Amen. Glory to God. Praise God. You may have the talent that you can go in different places and play. Thousands of people following you. But if you don't love your brother, you have nothing. You may speak in tongues, and if you don't love your brother, you have nothing. Oh, come on. You may be a millionaire. If you don't love your brother or your fellow man, you're nothing. Oh, come on, brothers and sisters. You may have prophecy. You may be a teacher. You may be a preacher or prophet. But if you don't have love for your fellow man, you don't have the love of God in your life. Oh, come on. Praise the Lord. You see, when we operate in love, the gifts of the Spirit will flow. I've seen so many ministers operate without love operating in their life. And I want to tell you, when Christ, when the Holy Spirit moves again, like we've been hearing, when He moves, when the revival comes, and He's here already, we're going to see an unprecedented unity in the body of Christ. There ain't going to be Baptists. There ain't going to be Pentecostals. But when the power of the anointing of God flows, people's going to stop and they're going to listen. When they see the miracles happen once again, they ain't going to doubt no more. I don't know about you, but my God can do that. Woo! Why? Because the remnant. He's getting the remnant ready for the resurrection. The shall be caught up, the rapture of the harp again, some of the, the resurrection of the just. He's getting his body ready. Amen. Isn't it wonderful that we can operate in love? I'm not here to preach. I'm here to, to speak what the Holy Spirit is saying. We need to get right. We need to get our lives right. There's a song that we sing in Henniger Church of God. We don't sing it enough, I guess. I don't sing it enough. Amen. It's called Get Right. We're going to dismiss on this note. Get Right, Church. So get right, church. We're going home. Get right, church. We're going home. You ought to get right, church. Get right, church. Get right, church. We're going home. I'm going to walk all around God's heaven Where my loved ones have gone before I'm going to sit on the banks of that river Where we'll meet to mark no more So get right, church, we're going home Get right, church, we're going home church get right church get right church we're going home Woo. heavenly father we thank you lord for your touch tonight we thank you for your healing 
We thank you for your manifestation of your spirit. Lord, we know you are in this house, God. We know that you're in Goose Pond. Lord, we know you're in section. Lord, we ask you, Lord, right now, God, that the church, Lord, will operate in the, in the spirit, in the atmosphere of unity, one another, and in one accord that we can see the move of God happen just like in Acts chapter 2. Lord, the move of, a, of your spirit that will make even the, the second revival of the 1900s to stop and everyone that ever came out of them and say, I've never never seen those things before in my life. Oh Lord, you're about ready to do something in this world. We may look at this world and say it's a world of evil, but Lord, you are greater than anything. You're greater than that spirit that is in this world. I ask you, Lord, today, Lord, to prepare our hearts and prepare our minds for what you're doing in these last days. In the name of your son, we pray in Henniger Church of God and Goose Pond Church of God said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You are dismissed tonight. Thank you so much for coming. Please, if you can, uh, Henniger Church of God, please, we have.